go ahead and open up resize.ai in your working folder. Let's talk about resizing artwork. Now, on the face of it, that sounds pretty straightforward, and I would agree. I mean, it really isn't rocket science to resize anything, but there are, I don't know, a few tricks in that we can pull in here and make it a little bit more valuable to you. Now, I've got an artwork piece on screen, and basically he is in one big group. He's made up of a lot of different parts. So the first thing I did was select everything and go Object Group. So he's all one big piece. That means the resizing will, well, be relative to the entire object, as if it were one object. So that's number one. Number two, the good news is resizing vector artwork. The cool thing about that is simply the fact that no matter what you do, you're not going to impact the quality of it. That's nice. Let me show you one more thing. If you go into Edit in Windows or Illustrator on a Mac and go into General Preferences, don't forget you have scale, strokes, and effects right here. Now, by default, that is off. But if that's on, when you make something bigger, the strokes and effects will get bigger. Most of the time, I don't want that. But remember, you've got that option, too. Now, if you'll notice, I do have the regular old selection tool up here. And I come over here and click. I've got them selected again the bounding box. Now I mentioned this before. If you don't see the bounding box, you want to go up to the word view on the pull down menu and select show. Mine says hide because it's there. Hide bounding box, show bounding box. Let me stop here for a minute and get off message just real quick. All the programs that we use, Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, Microsoft Word, doesn't matter, have tons of stuff under these pull down menus, don't they? There are all kinds of things going on down here. We have a tendency to stay where we are comfortable and we don't explore. I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people, myself included, have a tendency to kind of stay where we're comfortable. If you ever have time, which may never happen, but if you ever have time, every once in a while, go into one of these pull-down menus and look at something like, for example, Hide Gradient Annotator. What's that? I don't even know what that is. Find out how. Come up here to help and type it in. And it will tell you what it is. And it's possible, I'm not saying it's probable, but it's possible you might say, oh man, I wish I'd known about that one a week ago. It could have really saved me a lot of time. Get to know these programs. Now, back to resizing. If we have the bounding box, which I do like, well, it's very easy. I mean, there's not much you do here. You can go to a corner. I think you know this. I can drag any way I want to this guy because I'm just pulling and dragging. If I hold the shift key down, I keep in proportion. If I add to that the alt key, now that's the option key on a Mac and the alt key in Windows, you go in and out from center. So the alt key or option key and the shift key in and out from center in proportion. If I let go of the shift key and still hold the alt or option key down, I can do anything I want, but it's still going in and out from center. I find that one valuable when I'm trying to resize artwork within the frame of something else. So I know it's pulling it out, say, well, from the center. And that kind of helps me out when I'm trying to resize something. If we go to a corner, we get a bent arrow. Now, you've got to be in a certain distance. But if we go ahead and pull this way, we can rotate. If we hold the shift key during the rotation, we get 45s and 90s. And so you can rotate it, you can resize it. Now there is another way that we can do this. Let's say either you have the bounding box turned off, which means you wouldn't be able to do anything that we did, or you just want to do it with a little bit more precision. You can come over here to this button right here, Scale Tool. Now if you select that tool, you have to first have something selected, which we do. Now it's a two-click process. The first time you come over here and you click somewhere on the object or off the object, and that's where the resizing kind of locks in. So I click right here, say on his forehead, one click, and you can see there's a little target there right now. You can move that target by dragging it. If I get anywhere, it doesn't matter where I am now because I'm using that tool, if I get over here and begin dragging, as you can see, it is dragging it in and out, but it's locking it to that mark that I made. Let me go ahead and double click the hand tool. That'll bring us right back again. There is another way you can do this. I want to show it to you now, but we're going to get into more detail on it later. 
same tool selected, this one right here. If I come over here and first hold down the Alt key, Option key on a Mac, Alt in Windows, and click, it opens up the scaling options, which allows you uniform, horizontal, vertical scaling, uh, scaling strokes and effects is right here for you. Lots of different things that we can do here, make copies, and we'll talk more about this one later, but that's a way to do it very precisely. And one more area, if you have an item selected, you'll see the transform option up here. And if you click that option, basically you can do the same thing up there. Lots of different ways. It's not just about dragging an object and looking at it. You can do some very precise resizing of images in Adobe Illustrator. And of course, that makes sense.